Uh, lovely, lovely people who in, can, can't speak. So, <laughs> what was that? Hi, this is the Sykes and Savage Book Club. I'm Simon Savage. And I'm Melanie Sykes. And today it's our first choice. So you'll have seen a video, what, about three weeks ago, was it, Melanie? Yeah. And we were starting a new book club. We're very, very excited about it. And our first choice was Girl, Woman, Other, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. First, we thought we'd have a bit of a chat and see how we both are and what's been going on. Yeah, how are you? I'm all right. I'm shielding, which is um, a new experience for me. Okay. Other than the front gate or the back wall. And it's quite, um, it's quite a time. Other than that, I'm all right. I'm, I'm having a bit of a, I get quite a lot of pacing, like a tiger. You find that you're doing that? I literally sort of just pace around the house quite a lot. I'm always on the move anyway. Honestly, I really should wear a pedometer because I don't think I sit down all day. Apart from now. When I've made you. Apart from now, mine's okay. You know, mine's okay because, I don't know, I can, I can go out. You know, I've got the boys here, so I'm not alone. And, you know, it's, it's bearable. It's bearable. But my concentration hasn't been great in terms of reading the book even. Again, like, you know, I mentioned it the last time we spoke. Reading once was something that came easily to me. At the moment, I am, it's a real effort to read. But I'm doing it because I love to read. Your brain at the moment is... is doing things that we don't know it's doing but it's doing it naturally subconsciously so there's fear anxiety stress fight or flight there's that whole thing going on and then you're like well I'll sit down for 20 minutes and read a book <laughs> yeah it doesn't quite go does it it just goes do one <laughs> <laughs> that is great I don't feel so bad about it now I like that but you have yeah. read the book I've read the book. I have. And I really, really, lo I did love it. There was elements of it that were a struggle in that I'm, I've, got, I've got the worst memory in the world. So when there are so many characters and lots of people are intertwining, I do lose track of who people are. I just do. It's just the way my brain is. So that was my only thing. So many names coming up and having to remember, um, you know, the connections between them and stuff like that. Well, we'll but that's my failing, not the book. Well, we should give people a little sort of summary of what the book is about. It's here. I've yeah. got back. You've got the lovely paperback. Yes. And it is a book that is told through the voices of 12 different women. Um, and we actually go back as far as 1905-ish. I think that's when it goes Yeah. Through. And we hear from, um, well, I should say 12 mainly women. Uh, yeah. Throughout history. And so we get these sort of, individual chapters in their narratives and then actually they all start to weave back together into kind of one bigger story which I thought yeah. was really really impressive. Did you find because then um, one of the things that quite a few people were saying that they not struggled with but was a bit Ooh, at first was sort of style is quite unusual. Yeah I mean there's no full stops is there the whole way through the book and I've never read a book that does that and I loved it because I could do it, it. I read it at my own pace, if you like. You're in control of the pace of it. I just thought it was really cool. I just, I, I enjoyed that. Because I, I think, obviously, subconsciously, when we see a full stop, we do pause. Whereas with this, it's not there. So that conditioning, we can free flow. And I just think it's a clever tool. What did you think? I like it in the fact that it makes, you make the pace of the book. Also, I thought what she did really well was put, this is gonna sound so silly, but I hate books with no breaks. It really bothers me. Like I know- Oh, yeah, I'm the same. You need, you need little islands to get yeah. to. And make a cup of tea or something. <laughs> Absolutely. I like to be at the end of chapter two, or the end of chapter whatever, before I then go to bed. I can't yeah. be like halfway through a page and there'd be more to come. It just doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> but this definitely, this, I, this style helped with that. I think she sort of wonders where people will need to pause and, and how much they'll take in. Because also when you've got so many voices, that's quite tricky. I did feel a little bit bad because I didn't think the pandemic would last this long. We'd all been locked down. I was thinking, maybe I should have just chosen something a bit breezier too. But we have discovered we both quite like melancholy. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind darkness of life because it's, it's facts. This is how it is. There, there are all of the challenges that we face make us who we are. And when we're smiling, those things still exist. It's just reality. And I love reality. I'm not afraid of it. I want to read about it. I relate to it. 
So for me, melancholy, I'm drawn to it in a way. I, I like melancholy music. I like a melancholy movie because I relate to sadness because I've experienced it. We all have. Yeah. Some people don't want to accept it, therefore they can't look at it. But for me, the more I see it, the more it makes me feel normal. You know, so, and, and that, believe me, that, that is, is necessary. <laughs> I think it helps us contextualise where we are, isn't it, in life. It sort of helps us put ourselves into where everything is in the world, if you know what I mean. Because if other people yeah. have been through those things, be it fictional or not, you still have those, you, that's how characters chime with you. Were there any characters that particularly chimed with you? Well, I really liked the character Morgan. I liked her story. I loved that she had this grandmother figure that could absolutely understand her and didn't judge her for any of her being and who she was and who she was morphing into and all the rest of it. Her parents were more judgmental with her. So the relationship between her and her grandmother really... Was, an, was a beautiful thing, because I think a lot of us have that. Whereas our parents, they look at us and they want us to be a certain way based on their ego and how they brought us up, and also what they wish maybe that they could have been. And they put all that onto you, whether you like it or not. Whereas grandparents have this beautiful position where they can sit back and just enjoy this emergence of character. And I really loved that. And also because she's an older woman, she can be not politically correct. And it's okay, yeah. you know, because we are in such a world now that you just slip up. Even like we said, we're going to talk about this book and you can, you can trip over yourself and say something that maybe you shouldn't because you don't have the language to talk about it, whether it be race or gender or whatever. She'll say things that make me flinch, but you forgive her because you know that sort of person, you know that, that you know, they've been through so much in their lives and so much change and actually currently things are changing so quickly. I, I thought that was a brilliant part, but also I love what you said there because I think this book has a lot of, of the relationships of mothers and daughters particularly and, and actually it's sort of the expectation parents can put on you, the um, cultural sort of heritage they can put on you that might not be for you and um, all of the different values that they've had in their era. I absolutely loved Boomy. There was something about her storyline and the fact that when you, you know, you're reading about how she loved her husband so much and then she falls in love with another woman at church. Oh my God, it like, it, I think it's that melancholy factor and it makes me want to cry every time I think about this. And I don't normally do this, but can I read this one passage that every time I think about it, it makes me want to cry? Go for it, darling. So beautiful. But I do, I always worry that reading out of a book sounds a bit... <laughs> <laughs> Amophi, in contrast, was shorter, darker, with pleasantly rounded shoulders and attractively fleshy arms. Boomy wanted to reach out and stroke, as well as her thick, dimpled thighs and her ample, delectable hips. With stretch marks, Boomy thought looked like art and felt like Braille. I mean... Oh, my God. It's, just, it's too much. And I think there are moments throughout this whole book where some of the writing is so stunning. But that, I yeah. think, is my favourite piece of writing ever. And, and what I love is I think that Bernadine celebrates the flaws in all of her characters. There was another one that I loved, which was Winsome, her daughter, Shirley, who is one of the teachers, who's one of the first black teachers at her school, but she's having an affair with her son-in-law. And I kind yeah. of loved her. I did. Is that bad? <laughs> I was like... I, I don't have daughters, so I'm okay to go down this road. So it's fine. It's fine for us. But this is, this is what I loved about the book is because there's no hiding behind scenarios that do happen. Yeah. Um, they just happen. Yeah. And I love that it's really explicit in that and it doesn't apologise for it because this stuff happens. Yeah. Well, what I think is amazing is Winston's story that she tells her granddaughter Rachel. Again, it's that granddaughter, a grandmother relationship. It's beautiful. Is how they came to the UK. And I loved the fact that the whole book didn't always look at that, but it was definitely always sort of in the background. Yeah, well, that, that moving from a different country and coming here really resonated with me because my family background is, is that my mum is Anglo-Indian. She was born in Rajasthan to Anglo-Indian parents, and we, it's a community of Anglo-Indians. And they all came here after partition because they didn't really belong there. 
and they thought they probably should move here. And I've interviewed my grandparents when they were alive. I know how it was for them. I know how the transition was. It's huge. It's a huge thing to do, especially back then. Yeah. Culturally, a shock. Um, it's not just climate. It's interactions with people. It's what your position in society was over there, completely changing your bottom of the rung here. And it is staggering that people made that move and tolerated what they tolerated and were able to evolve and bring up children to not take the same crap. I mean, it's just really extraordinary um, over, over decades how that rolls. And it never stops having an impact. You know, I, li I know that I'm not, that I'm mixed race. I, I, it's in my DNA, it's in my bones, it's in my energy, it's in my head, you know, I am my history. And I think it's really important. And the struggle is also in you. It just is. Yeah. I, yeah. Loved, I loved it. I relate to loads of it. We should have done a spoiler pre-warning, actually. But there will be spoilers from now on, so there we go. <laughs> but um, that really happens particularly with Penelope, who actually, when, when we first meet her, is quite deeply racist and then finds out about her own cultural heritage and is deeply moved. And actually, that becomes the whole epilogue of the book, is that moment where... And again, it gets me weepy. She goes to meet her, you know, her, her family for the first time. I just thought that was beautifully done. There was only one element, actually, in going through it again that I thought didn't need to happen, and that was the after party. You know, yeah. you know, when all the characters came together, I felt that, actually, in hindsight, that was the only bit where I thought, actually, we don't need that. We don't need all the characters. We've got that as we go on. We can do that as a reader. I wonder if she, she was under pressure to wrap it up, if, if that's the word. Because she didn't stick to any rules all the way through it, in that there's no big story arc either. No, so, it's a journey of characters. Yeah, so it's interesting that she made that choice. It goes against what she did for the whole however many pages prior. So it is, it is interesting that that happened. All the stuff done before was so intricate and in how certain characters would pop up in other stories. And I just loved that. One other thing, there was just one other character that I really... Well, it's not even the character, it's just how this character was written up. You know, Letitia? Yes. With her three men, three baby scenario. Oh, my God. I mean, the way that was written, it was almost matter of fact, but it was really dark, really abusive, yeah. really just the most horrendous pattern yet said so nonchalantly i don't know it was brilliant i just loved it i think the way that i loved about that was the fact that she made that very much that's just what the character's been through and you as a reader just have to deal with that and actually she yes. did the moments because when she looks at carol who's the one who gets into finance and she looks at the sexual abuse she received as a kid and then she focuses on numbers again it's done very i think there's so many, and it's actually one thing that I, I meant to bring up, there's so many themes in this book. I, I don't think I've read a book that has all of these, you know, you've got gender, you've got queerness, you've got um, coercive control. That chapter is horrifically haunting. Um, you've got sexual assault, um, you've got, you know, adoption, and you've got all these different things. And yet it's all done in that, I just, that, I found, and I never felt it was forced, ever. I never felt no. that these characters were being pushed to give voice to a specific subject, yet there are so many themes in there. It's yeah, it is. It's, it's so rich, it's so good, it's so clever. It's yeah. brilliant. Time for some questions from lovely people who've joined in. Both Sarah Exify and Casa Costello asked us very similar questions about the punctuation style. Did you think it worked? And, and we have said that we enjoyed it for that, but also... Do you think it might put people off and should they just go for it? Mm, I, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I, I would struggle to understand somebody that wouldn't want to read it because there's, no, there's not a load of dots peppered through it. It doesn't make sense to me. I think it can be a little bit of fear into people at first, but I, I say go with it and also read it aloud if you're ever having a problem like that because you find your own rhythm and then off you go. Yeah, no, I, I sort of read the first page and realised there was no full stops and then just went with it. So I guess I don't, I didn't have to transition to it. I just took it as it is. She just went with it. She just absolutely went with it. Off she went. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Reed's Things has asked, if you could pick one of the women to read an entire novel about, who would it be? Oh my God, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't think. I think the thing is, you almost get a novel in every chapter, which is another thing that I love about this book. 
Yeah, because there's so many amazing characters in this and they all have, obviously, a big story in themselves. I, I would really find it hard to choose one, to be honest. I know that sounds like a cop-out, but it's true. So, people keep asking us, like, which is your favourite character? And we've both kind of said that already. You really, really love Morgan's story and I really, really love Boomer's story. Um, and the same again, which perspectives did you connect with? And I should say these are from Everston Road and Emma Mervyn. So, thank you for their questions. Katrina Books and Food would like to know, she found the portrayal of men really interesting, especially white versus black. How did we feel about that? Now, I didn't necessarily spot race when it came to the men in the book, I just generally spotted good or bad. It's really funny in that there, 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 there is men in there, but they, they're sort of, they're, they're written in a really insignificant way, but, they're, but their behaviour is huge. Yeah. Um, so I loved it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't anti-men in a way. It's just not about the men. It's not about them, and that's the thing. They really kind of feel almost irrelevant, although, of course, they're not. It's really I think that's how I feel generally. <laughs> <laughs> not all men. Not all men. The biggest one for me was Roland, who was the, the gay male that was friends with Amma and kind of very important to Yaz at the beginning. And then also Joe, yeah. his husband, towards the end, who I, I fell a little bit in love with Joseph, the ginger farmer. <laughs> not oh, oh. I'm so glad they got back on track with their lives because it was idyllic and then it wasn't and then it was again and I, was, I loved all that. Well, also, it's that whole thing about, she does, again, even just in that section, she does the incredible thing of, you know, this love story that kind of goes down a dark path because she looks at postnatal depression in a time when it wasn't talked about. You've also got the fact they get a maid who won't do anything for her because she's a black woman. Just even in that small... I know. <laughs> I know, and it was so cinematic also, I thought it was wonderful, yeah. And then Faye Hutton finally has asked, if you could interview one of the characters, who would you choose? And I'm going to go with Penelope, because she was the one who I think had the biggest arc in the whole book, in the fact that she found out more about her cultural heritage, and the fact that she had been racist, and then really had to check that. Also, I love a cantankerous character. I think I'd want to interview Winston because I, the idea of people moving over to this country and the journey that they have to go on, I resonate with me because of my grandparents. So I guess having interviewed my grandparents and they're Asian, it'd be interesting to see somebody else's perspective from a Caribbean background. I think that the, the, the reception that these people get are slightly different. Thank you for all of your questions. So, Melody, what is your choice for the next read? Well, I thought we should go um, a little bit murder mystery. Yeah. It's The Hunting Party by Lucy Bowley. That is our next one. It is. Um, and all it says on the back is, in a remote hunting lodge deep in the Scottish wilderness, a setting, I love that setting instantly, um, yeah. old friends gather for New Year. The beautiful one, the golden couple, the volatile one, the new parents, the quiet one, the city boy, the outsider, and the victim. Not an accident, a murder amongst friends. Ooh. Love it. And we will be chatting about this on the 24th of May. Let us know your thoughts as you read it on our socials. And also keep sharing your bookmarks with us because we blink it. Love it. Yeah, because my, my one, he needs a book to cover himself. I want one of those ones. I'm absolutely jealous. <laughs> it's great. I know. Everybody loves this. I looked it up on the internet and the Google went a bit bonkers looking up there. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to say goodbye. So it's bye from me. And bye from me. I'll see you next month. Right, come on. You've made me cry twice today. <laughs> After I should have. Good. <laughs>